Ready when you are. <clears throat> this NFL DFS picks week six edition of Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, Virginia, and Arizona. From boosted parlays to in game odds on every major sport, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a $1,000 risk free sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit WYNNBet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap, America's marketplace to buy and sell sports bets. Check out the new PropSwap.com and use promo code SGP on your first deposit to receive up to $500 in bonus cash. We're also brought to you by Prediction Strike. Prediction Strike is the only performance based sports stock market where you can buy and sell shares of professional athletes. Use promo code SGP to receive a free athlete share with your first deposit of $20 or more. We're also brought to you by Odds Crowd. Are you the best NBA better in the U.S.? Odds Crowd is challenging you to prove it with their free to play fantasy betting contest. There's $3,000 up for grabs in their season long contest and $200 every week in their weekly contest. Just head over to oddscrowd.com to sign up now. And of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app, your home for all of our free picks and podcasts. He's one of those guys who will get penetration. Ooh, welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Brian, real money Kramer. What's happening, Crane? Dog. Oh, that was nice. I, I like the way that you acted that out. Uh, like, like the fine actor that you are. I, I got to be honest, Sean. Struggling. We had some late injury news. Yeah. Uh, the laptop went down. Stadium, or you know, the the whole studio is falling apart. First couple of days ago, the untimely death of the soundboard. We have a new uh, iPad on the way. Should be here Thursday, hopefully. Uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's not even, it's not even going to miss a full week. Ideally it's, it's listed day to day. Uh, we'll get that back. And then today Kramer's a uh, laptop, which we run the <laughs> studio off of the just entire network. decided to stop uh, working. Oh my God. Yeah. What a, what a disaster. Uh, then, then I had to, you, so of course your day is derailed. I got to freaking go to an Apple store and get, <laughs> get a new computer. Cause obviously the content machine j- can't just no. stop for a couple of days. There's can't, no, there's no emergency break on a content train, Ryan, no. whatever, whatever obstacles are thrown on the tracks. No. We're blowing right through them. Not, get off the tracks. It's not noon at the post office time to take <laughs> lunch. So I go to the Apple store and you wouldn't believe it, Sean. Could, they don't have the laptop that I have. N- not a single store has them in they stock. They don't need your money. They're so Apple. I then find a. Uh, so seems like it will be good enough. I go to a different Apple store where they've reserved it for me, and I go here. I'm here to pick this up. Where do I? Where do I buy it? And they tell me to wait for 20 minutes. <laughs> and at this point, it's like, well, I don't want to make a scene, but I'm literally just trying to pay you two thousand dollars for this computer, and I know it's just in the back. So just have one of those people over there. That's not doing a goddamn thing. Go get me the anyway, long story short. Fortunately, I worked triple time to get the tape over the Achilles of this fucking replacement computer. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're hopefully that everything's recording fine. Maybe you'll hear this one day. Maybe you won't. Uh, but I, I, you know what I did do? I channeled this aggression. I looked right into that windshield said, I'm not going to look at you rear view mirror. I'm gonna pick a fucking bomb ass contrarian <laughs> Millie Maker lineup that's Ooh. gonna blow your mind, Sean. All right, let's go. Let's get into it before we uh, get to the DFS lineup this week. Want to shout out our presenting sponsor, the Cole in the content train of the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, and that, of course, is WinBet. You want to win big? You got to do it with the Win Betting app. Oh man, it's uh such a nice, easy to, to use app in game, wagering player props, parlays, boosts. You want a little boost? You want a little uh, bonus call for that content train? WinBet has you covered so many States, Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, and Virginia NBA right around the corner. Of course, 
Check out the NBA Gambling Podcast, MLB postseason heating up, and of course the National Football League and college football. October quietly one of the best months to bet on sports. I mean, we're recording this on a Tuesday. Do I have a little uh, action on uh, on the raging Cajuns catching four at home? I do. God bless America. God bless America. God bless WinBet. Head over there, download the Win Betting app, or just go to wynnbet.com. Get that risk free thousand dollar sports bet today. Kramer, uh, we got a we got a great show for you. Uh, we had a nice little interview with uh, Harry Mays joining us uh, coming up shortly. Nice. I know Harry from uh, longtime uh, Philadelphia radio guy. Now he's teamed up with a sweet podcast network, Jacob Media. Doing a bunch of uh, he does does a bunch of eagle stuff, bunch of gambling stuff, NFL, college. Uh, that was really fun to have him on the show. We'll get to that, and then of course our uh, GPP DFS Mega Tournament lineup winner. We'll get to that, but I mean, again, what a what a day for the soundboard to be uh, to be down because everyone, of course, tweeting at us the John Gruden. We got to get our shit going mentally. Sound drops, even a couple uh, long cocks. Uh, made the, its way in there. There is a greater power at work here. I don't know if this is just the power of threes, uh, big or the th- power of Gruden. Things die in threes. The soundboard, the computer, and Gruden all in the same week. <laughs> I, I, I'm convinced that someone's coming after F. The too much heat. They're they're seeing the numbers from a September on oh. the podcast network. Yeah, and, and shout and out the, to the audience. I mean, you guys have been killing it. Spreading the word, subscribing, leaving reviews, and, we, and really helping us here. We turned into a blip on someone's sonar yeah. because all of a sudden soundboards breaking. Let's see how they deal with this <laughs> kind of adversity. Okay, check. Oh, let's just break the computer. I've never seen in my life. I've worked with computers a long time. Never seen this. It, it just stopped. Re- just really stopped. miss. Really missing the ner- the nerd sound drop after Ryan. Uh, I've worked with computers my uh, entire life. Never seen this kind of issue. I'm telling you, Sean. We're gonna have to do a full sweep. There are bugs in the studio. Yep. As soon as I, soon as I, uh, I mean, clean sleep. We need the X Files music. Clean sleep on the lock dog tees. <laughs> Eagles win, and then all of a sudden the uh, <laughs> studio starts unraveling. Did the hits come out on the Giants? <laughs> Daniel Jones and Saquon oh, go down in the same game. All right, let's let's get to this Gruden uh, news. I mean, I, I guess it makes sense. Once all this comes out, you gotta you gotta uh, give them the axe. It'll be interesting to see. One, I reached out to WinBet uh, to see if they were going to grade it as first coach fired. They weren't doing first coach fired. And I tweeted at them like, oh man, you guys are lucky. You just avoided a massive headache because I think technically he, didn't get he fired. resigned. Yeah. And, and so moving forward, these books really should, um, you know, like clarify the language of like first coach, no longer to be coaching, but it's weird because usually we don't have coaches resign. It's almost they're yeah. always fired, and they're always fired for being bad. The Raiders are in a unique situation. They're three and two. Certainly, they got off to the hot start. Maybe got fortunate with some of those OT wins, but now have lost two in a row. But they're still a talented team, somewhat three and two. Like like they're still in the mix for the playoffs. So I think normally in this situation, teams are fine just putting an interim coach in, bottoming out, and and moving towards next year. But I think if you're the Raiders. You no, know, bringing in a Doug Peterson as the next head coach that kind of makes sense, or or at least like a veteran legit coach. I mean, maybe they think this special teams coach is that they're filling in can actually do the job of a head coach. And it's not only Gruden was the head coach, but he was also the the play caller and essentially the offensive coordinator. I, I know they had an offensive coordinator, but the fact that the special teams guy is taking over shows. Who is probably really in charge of calling plays and everything? So, man, a weird spot now for the Raiders. Who do you think they're going to end up with as their coach? Uh, I mean, I think a you you probably have to make a splash. But bringing it real quick back to the first coach fired. Yeah, we had this conversation in the off season because we jokingly talked about Urban Meyer leaving for medical reasons, yeah. leaving for a chance at a big time college job, which you know looks a lot more realistic now. I the, the the book should really go to a method of like first coach replaced or yeah. something like that. Like just change the verbiage. But back to the Raiders. I mean, it, it's it's a tough situation. Cuz yeah. do you really like the roster? Like do you No, I see that's inheriting I, a Gruden roster doesn't seem like the best situation. 
Yeah, and and that's why I think maybe a guy uh, like Doug Peterson might be willing to take this job. I, I don't know where he's at. I I think he likes the idea of just being a coordinator, and he probably wants to find that perfect cushy coordinator job. I don't know if he wants to hop into this hellfire that will be the Las Vegas uh, coaching situation. Uh, is it though? I actually think it's not a bad job to well, take over. Yeah, I, I guess it depends. I mean, I guess there's just going to be a shit ton of media scrutiny. But in the same way that when a coach you're takes following it over, Gruden, though, like, you're following Gruden, but can't be that hard. And he's taking a ton of shit, so maybe it is. Maybe it is a, a bit of a layup. Um, it I, also sounds like Gruden's an asshole. Like, yeah, it sounds like if nothing else, uh, whatever kind of like long ranging comments you want to make about him, it does seem like at a minimum, he's a bit of an asshole. And so there is a chance that replacing him is, isn't the hardest thing. Cause maybe I get it. He was an, a fun and, offensive and, guy. And but you like, probably bring in a guy who's more of a player's coach. Who's not a dick just to kind of make up for uh, John Gruden. But as, as far as like the John Gruden firing thing, I mean, yeah, you, I, what he said and what he emailed, you shouldn't be sending did you hear, that. Did you hear Keyshawn, Keyshawn no, Johnson's he story about Gruden? He talked about when he inherited that great roster and kind of was the little bit of boost. He gave him credit. He's like, he was the boost to get him over the top. Yeah. But when they won the Super Bowl, he snatched the trophy out of the GM's hand and said, that's mine. <laughs> and it was an interesting story. And he's like that, that same GM left the bucks midway through the season the next year. Cause he didn't want to deal with Gruden. Well, yeah. And, and Gruden sounds like probably a dick, probably a pain in the ass, probably an egomaniac, but you're, you know, he's getting paid a hundred million dollars to coach football. I think there's probably a lot of, that a lot retar- of, that was a bad deal. A, a lot of people in, in the NFL probably fit the dick asshole egomaniac, especially, you know, when you're a head coach, maybe not some of these younger coaches, but older coaches like Gruden. And again, you shouldn't make any excuses for what he said. You shouldn't be sending that in an email, but it is kind of crazy too. One, there's clearly a, a vendetta with the NFL against Gruden because they, the, these emails were found not because they're investigating Gruden because they're investigating uh, the Redskins creating a hostile workplace. And then Allen is emailing, you know, back and forth with Gruden. This is like a personal email. Now Allen is using his company email. That's why it became disclosed. And I think, honestly, I think the NFL, aka Roger Goodell, when he read that um, Roger Goodell is an anti-football pussy, I think he said, "You know what? This ends now. We're gonna keep leaking stuff and keep leaking stuff until the Raiders fire John Gruden." Because for the NFL to suspend him, he technically wasn't working for the NFL. They wouldn't really have a case legally. But uh, I think and. I, I mean, I, you're probably on the same page, Kramer, but I bet there's some stuff in there that he said about the owner that the owner wouldn't want it one out there that the NFL was like, Oh, you want, if you don't fire him, these emails are going to keep getting leaked. I think that's why Gruden resigned. Not necessarily because he felt bad because he realizes there's way more stuff coming out. And now the NFL is in this weird spot where there's a, there's like 65,000 emails. I ha- I find it hard to believe that John Gruden was the only thing in a private email saying disparaging stuff. And it sets a crazy kind of a crazy precedent in society where you can get fired for emails you sent in your personal email seven, eight years ago. Again, what he said was bad and you shouldn't say that kind of stuff. But it's, it's, again, it's though, a weird, like if you have a, if you have a correspondence with your friend and you, yeah. and he works for the FBI and you send the email to his FBI <laughs> email account, well, it's FBI, but I, I'm just saying, if you send if you send an email, like maybe I'm I'm uh, you know you're hyper aware. Maybe I'm hyper aware, but if you send an email, I, I don't think John Gruden knew of the Redskins email retention policy when he responded he to his didn't. friend. I mean, the guy from the Hooters president is on there. It sounds like you know typical dad email thread where they're you know inappropriate comments, stuff that you wouldn't Lots say, of caps. stuff that you wouldn't say in polite company. I mean, I think if uh, and it was, it's an interesting dynamic because both Tarico and um, Tony Dungy went to bat for John Gruden when the first kind of uh, emails came out. So there, there are people that went to bat for Gruden 
And now they're in a they're in a weird I, spot too. I don't think anyone went to bat for Gruden. I think they just said, "Hey, I don't I don't think this guy is like a a stone cold racist." Yeah. But it, it again, like Tony Dungy quickly walked it back this morning when there were more emails uh, on on social media and was like, "Oh, he see, again, he seems like an asshole." Like they, like but he's it, like, you know, he's a Christian, so he'll forgive him if he if he <laughs> changes his ways. It, it does seem like clearly someone in the NFL, aka Roger Goodell, had uh, Look, a bone just, to pick with Gruden and wanted him out. Yeah, let's see all the. I, I, like, I wouldn't mind. I mean, there's a couple more nuggets out it, of these. You got emails. the Hooters uh, president in this email thread. Uh, there's, I mean, you know, the stuff with, I mean, Bruce Allen making the these women uh post topless the Washington cheerleaders and then sending the photos to Gruden I mean that with his work email yeah and that is you know impacting people's ability to make a living and you know creating a hostile workforce that you know that stuff that deserves you to get fired and you know Gruden saying it's just weird to me I guess the precedent of seven you know a personal email you sent seven years ago costing you your job so I guess you we, know they didn't they didn't know the equivalent of going to the payphone <laughs> with email, you know. Just they, didn't th they didn't think of a burner email. They, they don't know but about again, signal with disappearing you know, Gruden messages. Doesn't come off <laughs> certainly not in these emails as a nice guy or a likable guy. So you can only I don't even know if you would feel bad for him, but um, just the <laughs> I swear if he didn't make fun of Roger Goodell personally by calling him a clueless anti football pussy, direct quote. I think he may still have his job. I mean, I certainly think that like what I want to know is how did the that data come to the attention? Like was someone just searching through the emails one day? No, or, no, cuz they just they were and, No, no, no. I I understand they they took in all these emails and they probably indexed them. But what I'm saying is like <laughs> honestly, you know, was what, it probably, a memo that someone probably, said, uh, Mr. Goodell? <laughs> right. You know how you know how database stuff works. I'm sure there were certain keywords that the lawyers in this harassment workplace lawsuit were looking for, aka pussy. And it it was probably they were probably saying, like, oh, I bet Bruce Allen is using this and and trying to like, hey, I'm gonna go score some. They put that into the search, and then up comes this uh, John Gruden email where he's called the commissioner a pussy. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, again, I just it would be great if we could just have more. I mean, I I'd pay a subscription fee. Uh, what yeah. do you make make oh, it? Uh, we need an OnlyFans of uh, John Gruden <laughs> just reading his uh, personal emails. It, I, just all of them, because if John Gruden is saying that, what do you think, dumber younger brother Jay is doing? <laughs> Because he was around. There, there is going to be some Jay Gruden which, shrapnel. I can't imagine the Hooters uh, CEO gets off completely clean. Uh, ESPN employed the man, so you know. Yeah, they, maybe they're maybe they, they're part of the problem. Yeah. All right, let's uh, get to the interview with Harry Mays, and of course, right after that, we'll be giving out our DFS lineups for Week Six. Before we do that, want to make sure we get to shout out PropSwap.com. Baseball playoffs are heating up, and that's a perfect time to head over to PropSwap.com. Where you can buy and sell real sports bets. Use the promo code SGP on your first deposit, and PropSwap will double it up. Uh, double it up to five hundred dollars. Double the cash means double the odds. Again, you're already getting the best odds because you're buying people's hedges. Now maybe someone has uh, Dodgers to win the NL. They're getting a little scared. They want to hedge. You you can get some great odds, great prices, all available over at PropSwap.com. Promo code SG. P. Joining us on the line, he is one of the hosts of the Middle Show and Jacob Media, Harry Mays. Harry, uh, thanks for calling in, man. Appreciate it. Hey, great to be on the show, guys. Look forward to it. Yeah, you know, uh, we before the show started, we were already talking a little golf gambling. <laughs> I know our uh, golf gambling podcast guys; they had Matthew Wolf. You said you had Matthew Wolf. Yeah, bit of, bit of a sweat there. What and what is your what does your Sunday look like? Because if you're sweating out golf bets along with the NFL. What what kind of setup you got going? Well, I got a multiple TV set up here in my in my basement uh, room. You know, I got you know a big screen, like an eighty five inch on top, Ooh. and then a forty some odd inch on bottom. And a, I'll usually put the red zone on the bottom TV, and you know, have the Eagles game on. And, you know, from one to four fifteen, whatever it is. And then I switched it to the golf because I had Matthew Wolf, and I'm keeping my eye on the red zone because I had the over in the Dallas Cowboys game. 
Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of action going on. Oh, the yeah. Weekends. No, it's, it's it, great. It, it keeps my wife out of here because she's <laughs> playing golf all weekend. She plays like 36 holes on a Saturday and Sunday because she knows I'm just, you know, totally invested in in the games and doing shows. I do a pregame show on Fox Sports, The Gambler on on Eagles game days. And and then I and then I'm just watching for my bets. So it's a there's a lot going on, man. You know, I know you guys know how it is. Oh, yeah. We're, <laughs> we're- oh. Nothing impresses an amateur uh, gambler, amateur sports viewer, like someone who can watch a t a wall of say eight TVs and somehow keep up with everything. <laughs> yeah. I wish I had eight TVs. <laughs> well, anytime you're out in uh, L.A., come by our studio. We'll uh, we'll oh, beautiful uh, crack a beer and watch it. We call it God's Eye because it can see everything. And <laughs> oh, we got man. we got we got the eight games going, and it was That's a, incredible. It was uh, truly a wild weekend. We'll we'll hit start with the NFL. I mean, before we fired up the show, Kramer and I, you know, him being the Giants fan, me being the Eagles fan, just kind of come into the reality that the Dallas Cowboys might actually be good. We've seen them get off to hot starts and then and then kind of fall apart as the season goes along. I thought their defense would be much more of a liability, but I mean, this Diggs guy is coming out of nowhere, looking like Deion Sanders in his prime. What is your take on uh, on this Cowboys team? Yeah, they're for real. I, I think they are. I think, you know, I came to the realization uh, a little while ago and I, I'm trying, I tried to inform my Philadelphia listeners that Dak Prescott's a top 10 quarterback. He's a legit franchise quarterback. He can play. And yeah. we just got to, we just got <laughs> to put accept our it. arms around that <laughs> and realize that that is a reality. There was a, a long time you know, when, when Carson Wentz was here for the first couple of years before things went really bad, you know, is, is it, you know, Carson versus Dak and all this kind of stuff. And you now and now nobody in Philadelphia would give Dak any credit. And then he started to think like, well, Jerry Jones really isn't giving Dak a whole lot of credit because he won't give him a contract. Like yeah. what's, what's the story here? Then they finally buy into him. And I thought they, they made the right call. He suffers that awful injury last year and comes back this year. And, and, and he is just awesome. Now, granted, he's got a lot of good things going for him in that he's got a running game that he can lean on with not one, but two really good running backs in Zeke and Pollard, but he's got all kinds of weapons. The, you know, the offensive line isn't what it used to be, but they're good enough. And now they're starting to really build up that defense through the draft. I mean, Micah Parsons, and you mentioned Diggs. Uh, you know, those, those could be two of the best defensive players right now in the NFL through these first five weeks. Yeah, so no, it's, it's, it's time crazy. that we got to start acknowledging that they're the best team <laughs> in the NFC East, like it or not. And we have to move our energy to just focusing on what could Jerry Jones do to, <laughs> to screw mess this, this up? up. <laughs> what, what, like, what can we make a reality? Just start speaking into existence. That passionate speech he gave d- during hard knocks where he said, <laughs> I mean that that looked like a man who was near death and wanted <laughs> yeah. to see like wanted to see the promised land one more time. So one more time. Oh. Well, I, I'm still holding out hope, Mike McCarthy. I know he's he's the offense is looking good. Like you pointed out, they have Zeke and Pollard. Who Pollard, you can make a case, kind of looks more explosive than Zeke sometimes. Yeah. But they're running the ball, they're throwing the ball over the place. Dan Quinn seems to be the the thing that was really missing, along with Parsons there on the defensive mm-hmm. side. I'm just holding out hope that Mike McCarthy screws things up as we go along. Uh what about the Eagles though? I mean, I, I think as a fan, as an analyst, if you told people they're going to go down to Carolina, play a tough defense, get a, get a 21, 18 victory, everyone would be happy. Oh, nice road win. We're so stoked. But then watching that game and then, and then kind of the, the breakdown after it, you would have, you would have swore the team lost because everyone is so upset and certainly they struggled. The offense seemed to add a sink uh, yeah. Sirianni all over the map with his play calling, but the defense really came out of nowhere. It got three interceptions, kind of a weird game overall, but uh, what's, what's the feeling in Philadelphia right now? No, I think you summed it up. It is, it's like you, you got the win and you, you feel good. Cause anytime you can win in the NFL, it's, you know, it's a good feeling on a Monday, but you start you know, to really think about how it came about. And you're like, man, this offense, I don't even know what the offense is. You know, we're through five games now where you start to see by this time, guys, that where a team's identity, at least offensively starts to take shape. And I'm, I don't know what this offense is built on. It's screen passes. It's, you know, it's um, swing passes and screens to wide receivers pretty much. And every now and then, you know, Jalen Hurts will look at one half of the field. His w- one read isn't open, and then he'll just take off. And you know that that to me is not sustainable in the NFL to to win a whole lot of games. 
Um, I didn't think they'd be much more than a six or seven win team. And at this point right now, I don't even know if they get to, to seven. I think they might be a five or six win team. Uh, when you start looking at the schedule, they got Tampa coming in here on Thursday night. They're seven point underdogs. They're not winning that game. Uh, you know, the Las Vegas Raiders, I know look like, like, trash this past weekend, losing to Chicago, but that is not an easy game going to Vegas. I know Eagles fans are all fired up about it. The ones that are going, but you know, that, that to me is a a very losable game Detroit. They could possibly win, even though it's a road game. Uh, The jets is a win is a win game and a couple of division games. I think they're a five, six win team. And we just don't know. There's so much we don't know. And I don't know that I know more after week five than I did in August when we were saying, well, this is one of these years where we're trying to figure stuff out. Yeah. Can Nick Sirianni coach and can Jalen Hurts be a starting quarterback in the NFL? I'm nowhere closer to knowing those answers than I was in August. Well, and you yeah. know what needs to happen now? They need what? to start evalu- evaluating the backup and third string quarterbacks. Get ahead of it this year. Don't wait till week sixteen. The Giants fans, he's still mad about uh, you know putting in Sudfeld this against way, the Redskins. You know what to do with those three top ten picks this year. Well, and, and that right. is the thing. As, as a fan, we're in this middle ground of like, hey, let's give Hurts this year. Let's see what we got. And then we have right now it's looking like three top ten picks. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what Wentz does. We're taping this pre Monday night, but. Either way, that Colts team has a lot of issues. That pick looks pretty good. That Dolphins pick looks like a real steal. I mean, as fun as it is to make fun of Howie Roseman and certainly a, n- a number of whiffs on his resume, but if he's going to come away with this from this last draft with Devonta Smith and the Dolphins, <laughs> you know, could be top five, top three pick, that is a that is an all time steal by Howie. So th- they're in an interesting spot, but really the worst case scenario is like you laid out. If, if we get to the end of the season, we don't know if Jalen hurts is the guy or not. Should we be using some of these high picks for a quarterback and, and truly pulling the reset button? And where are we at with Sirianni? Or are we going to let him have another year too? let him mm-hmm. kind of grow these young draft picks? If he, if he really isn't the guy, uh, wh- what about the league in general? I mean, the Cardinals still five and zero. Oh. I, I I wasn't certainly high on them in the NFC West. I, I thought the Rams, even Seattle, I thought was probably going to win the division. But the Cardinals right now, only team yeah. undefeated, five and zero, oh, pretty surprising. And they've done pretty well against the spread. Uh, what's what's your take? Who, who's kind of your biggest surprise so far in the NFL, either positive or negative? Well, I'd say you know positive is the Cardinals. I knew they were going to be pretty good. I didn't think they'd be this good, at least this early. I, I was with you on the Rams. Um, you know, I was I was very bullish on the Rams and Matt Stafford going out there. I I still think Sean McVay is a really good coach and a really innovative offensive mind. Even though his offense didn't show up in the Super Bowl a few years ago and only put up three points, but I really like him. And now that he's got this this kind of a quarterback and Cooper Cup, I, I, the Rams to me are still the team right now. And I'm still holding out a little bit of faith for Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers because I'm invested in them to win the NFC Championship in a bet that we made back in July. So, <laughs> what'd you, uh, you what'd know, you, uh, have to, what'd you uh, get be the, up front. Uh, I'm invested. <laughs> what'd you get the Packers at in July? Uh, oh, geez, I just Aton put this in. My my co-host put it in on his site. I don't even know what we got, but I just threw him a couple hundred dollars and we put a a shoot a show bet mm-hmm. in. Oh, I like Packers. that. It might be like 18, something 18 yeah. to one, yeah, 20 that, to one, that, something like that. That was the time to bet. I mean, that was when people yeah. were like, Ooh, is Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, th- right. There was a nice little window there. And I even uh, got a couple steals in my fantasy drafts because he was going in some of oh. these best balls. He was going undrafted. It was crazy. Right. And you just kind of, you know, similar situation almost with Ben Simmons. They can say they want out. They can say they're not going to play. But when they actually have to start sending the money the other way, when it's a a wire transfer out going to the Packers for whatever millions of dollars, and, and the Packers yeah. were in no, if they weren't going to trade him on draft day, then what they just weren't going to trade him. It seemed like he they were just going to figure something out. Uh, I don't know if he gets past this year, but that team is still still pretty good and and. You know the NFC does feel pretty wide open. Yeah, there's they are still pretty good, and then they they picked up uh, Smith at the you know from Dallas in that trade. It was kind of a wild week last week. Yeah, you know with Stephon Gilmore, you know going to Carolina. Carolina, you know their offense, man. I'll tell you, they are very limited, and that's on my pregame show. I said that this is a very winnable game for the Eagles, not because of anything the Eagles really do. 
but because Carolina's offense is not dynamic enough. It just isn't. I mean, you know, Sam Darnold looked like the Jets version of Sam Darnold on Sunday, you know, throwing three interceptions. He, he was inaccurate yeah. the entire day, missing wide open guys. So they, they got the Jets Darnold on Sunday f- uh, for Panther fans. That's unfortunate, but they really need to, to get McCaffrey back in order to, to make that run because they're making these deals for these defensive backs. You know, like like it's a team that really believes they can go to the playoffs and make a run. And, uh, you know, but their offense is going to have to really pick up in order for that to happen. You're asking me about some other surprises, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I know I had them yesterday against Denver. I, yep. I went on a sort of a, a, a contrarian play to just take Pittsburgh because everybody's down on them. And they had Denver coming in and Denver was, fa- I believe it's two and a half, right? Wasn't the game? Yeah, two and it, a half? it was, it was kind of jumping around. Yeah. I, I think they may have ended up closing a favorite because it seemed like drew lock was going to be the starter. So when I heard that, Oh, drew lock right. on the road in Pittsburgh, even though big Ben's looked rough, I was, uh, you know, we were both on the Steelers there, but they, they may have closed a, a dog there. And it did yeah. seem like people were going to ride the Broncos strictly because of how bad uh, Big Ben looked. Yeah, and and now they lose Juju uh, Smith Schuster for the rest of the season. And he's a nice weapon for them, but they've been a huge disappointment. Um, I'm really, really impressed with what Buffalo has done, man. Especially last night, they're just a big play machine on offense against Kansas City. I know Kansas City's defense stinks. Uh, you know, and Mahomes keeps turning the ball over and that's an issue that they really need to address. I think for somewhere along the line, these defensive minds are starting to figure out ways to contain that Kansas city offense. It's take Travis Kelsey out of the, take him, take him out. You can give up a big play maybe or two to, to the, uh, to the speeds are outside the cheetah, but just Kelsey is the, is the engine that drives that train to me and defenses are taking him away, including the Eagles did a good job on him in a loss of uh, two weeks ago. And the, the real, uh, the radio broadcast was really nailing this point home, but basically the, the, the bills came into this game with the intent to, to, to foul to, to mm-hmm. basically be super physical, force the refs to call flags. Cause that's what they felt like Kansas city did to them. So it mm-hmm. worked well. Yeah. And, and I think uh, Buffalo's offense obviously has looked amazing. Dawson Knox kind of emerge out of nowhere to give them a, another little uh, weapon there. But really for me, it's the bills defense. Like the bills defense has been really strong keeping them in, in these games. And I think uh, historically, every, if Milano was out, it would have been a bigger oh, problem. Yeah, they would have, they would have really been in trouble, but their defense has been able to play even with Milano out. And yeah, I, I think that's kind of what separates this bills team from the others. And even last year, they didn't have the home field advantage with the fans. So I think if they get that number one seed and you have to go through Buffalo to get, yeah. Uh, to get, get anywhere in the playoffs, that's going to be a really tough out. And, and yeah, all over the bills there. Uh, nice win in Kansas City, and and now the Chiefs. I mean, they're two and three. Mm-hmm. I, I certainly didn't see that coming for Kansas City, and you just kind of pencil it in as like, oh, you know, it, uh, Patrick Mahomes. They're going to eventually figure it out, but they really, the Andy Reid, you know, revitalized offense in Kansas City does seem to be stagnating a little bit, and it does seem like you slow down Kelsey, who got banged up late. I haven't mm-hmm. seen the injury report, but I wouldn't be surprised if he is in in the protocol there. He looked like he took a whack. Hangover is um, real, Sean. The hangover is yeah, real. It really is. They've been yeah. they've been going hard. And how about you know Buffalo sticking with them? Josh Allen is he just not the oh. perfect quarterback for that team? I mean, he's just a perfect bad weather quarterback, you know, in cold, snowy, windy Buffalo, like that big, strong armed, tough son of a bitch. He's perfect. Oh for man, the Bills. and he's just he's just so fun to watch because he's yeah he's not afraid to run. He has a giant frame. And yep. it's not, it's not like when we watched Wentz run, you're and you're like, Oh my God, he's going to get hurt. He's going to get hurt. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Something about Josh Allen. You're just like, this dude's not getting hurt. He's I big. mean, some he's of these yeah. smaller, uh, you know, dive it, defensive backs should be worried because Josh Allen can lower his shoulder. You know what you're seeing? Like Carson Wentz might be North Dakota tough, but yeah, I played uh, in a dome. My, you know, sources <laughs> yeah. close to the situation, AKA the guy who worked at this ranch that I stayed at, who claimed <laughs> to be a college uh, roommate of Josh Allen. It's reliable source just said he was a tough son of a bitch doing cowboy like tough shit, yeah. you know, like the kind yeah. of stuff that just makes you like raw and tough. And honestly, like when he went and took that hurdle in the game last night, uh-huh. like whole teams on hit behind him, oh, like yeah. there's not a player in that locker room. That's not behind him. They got the perfect wide receiver. I mean, bringing in Emmanuel Sanders, honestly, it's just injury. 
Because yeah. if they have the home field, and no then, one's yeah. going to Buffalo. And, and you can make a case even the the offense hasn't really unleashed their full potential because fantasy wise and numbers wise, Diggs hasn't even really hasn't had an amazing game. season. And and certainly he has a ceiling that we probably just haven't seen yet. Uh, what about college? I know you guys. I I know you cover college uh, for the Gambler Show. Talk a bunch of college as well. I mean, obviously the big storyline from the weekend was Alabama getting knocked off. That was pretty crazy. I mean, the the cover certainly that makes sense, but Alabama losing outright, and now you look at the. Uh, I mean. <laughs> The college football playoff probably the most wide open. It feels like it's been in a long time. I mean, is Iowa going to make the college football playoff? Like, wh- what's going on here? Well, I think Iowa's got a, a clean uh, slate to get to the Big Ten championship game at least because that yeah. western part of the division in the Big Ten is not very good. Uh, I think big, you know, Penn State them beating Penn State was probably their biggest hurdle uh, for the rest of the season. Now, does Penn State, who has now some injury issues? at key positions. They've got Ohio state, they've got Michigan and they've got Michigan state. Nobody's talking about Michigan state who's six and zero and has a running back that seems to run for over 200 yards every other week. And nobody's talking about them. You know, Mel Tucker's done a fantastic job uh, coaching that, that football team up and and turning that program around. But the East is stacked. The West is is definitely going to be Iowa. And that was a great win for them. It was just bizarre when Clifford went out down 17 to they were up 17, three, they lose the quarterback. And for the next uh, 46 plays, Penn state's offense generated 50 yards on 46 plays with the backup in. I mean, that was just atrocious. Iowa should have blown them out. They got the benefit of four turnovers and really didn't do a whole lot with it. Uh, But that was a, that was a great game. You guys talked about Bama. I mean, how about the fact that Bama you know, they're losing the game and early and you're thinking, wow, they're going to come back. They're going to win. You yeah, know, they're like going to the get Chiefs. the second half and they'll end up winning. Maybe they don't cover the 18 or whatever it was, but they're going to win the game. You, that's what, what I was thinking when I was watching it. And then when they blocked the punt and scored the touchdown on the block punt, you're like, here it is. That's the emotional play that yeah. will send them to a big win. The next play, our Shane takes the kickoff return 96 yards the other way for a touchdown. If you, I've never seen an emotional back and forth like that in a big game in a long time. That was unbelievable. A great college weekend. Just phenomenal. I just rewatched Ole Miss in Arkansas. What a game <laughs> oh, that my, was. Well, and, and, and uh, Ole Miss was my lock. <laughs> and then, you know, sitting, okay. I got it at like six or six and a half crazy, obviously game the entire time. And then you're like, okay, the game's over. Wow. They got a scare there at the end. Oh no, there's one second left on the <laughs> clock. Like, oh my God. And you know, instantly what's going to happen. They're going to get right. it. And then they could, you know, couldn't even send it to overtime to maybe get some crazy cover there in overtime. Oh man, there yeah. between the NFL and college, it was full of sweats this weekend. Oh, it, was. it really was. As a gambler, it was a it was a great <laughs> weekend. I mean, we were uh, talking on our recap show, the NFL show. I mean, that Chargers Browns game was right. insane. I mean, I I I don't play a ton of totals, but I would have been all over that under there because the Chargers have a pretty decent defense. I mean, that's kind of how. Cleveland wins games as well. I mean, Baker's so, almost a liability at this point. I got backdoored because they carried the Chargers into the end zone. Yeah, the Browns. <laughs> that really must have killed some bets. And yeah. and and the Chargers, they've done that twice this year, where they could kind of just run the clock and kick the field goal. Instead, they were trying to run the clock, and then Eckler, he was like standing up, but he didn't go down. And uh, man, they're they're a fun team to watch. They've been they've been all over the map, but yeah, I mean, college, uh, it's been crazy. And and maybe we don't get that oak. You know, what was it like last week? It felt like Alabama and Georgia just mm-hmm. you know pencil them in for the championship game. But now there's there's some right. legit chances that doesn't happen. I mean, do you, do you think there's any chance that a Kentucky or a Florida can rise up and beat Georgia? Yeah, I mean, there's a way. We they, talked about that. Like, their schedule starts getting real here now with some mm-hmm. of the games that actually matter. And when you look at what Kentucky has been able to do, yeah, it, you know, it's college football. There's always that game where it seems like they're going to trip up. I think the one difference with this Georgia team is they have an NFL front seven. And it doesn't yeah. seem like anyone has been able to do much of anything on them. So, quarterback aside, team aside. Yeah. I think we're going to see Georgia in the championship game, but I think the interesting thing will be, you know, what happens with Alabama the rest of the way. 
Cause Saban has been quietly kind of letting us in that, that he doesn't think this team is as good as, it, as he's been in the past. Mm-hmm. And now right. with an actual loss, like we pray for the players in that team. Pray for I mean, I don't know if you saw the video of the the, the police escort plowing through oh the Texas God, that, poor, that poor there was like a, a girl on the field but, that just got trucks. But Nick by. Saban got took a shot. We don't know if he's gonna show up on the injury report <laughs> with maybe a stiff neck or something. I, I just know that we're betting on Alabama this week because holy oh, crap. Yeah. You 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 gotta like a team coming off a loss like that. Yeah. And he's certainly gonna have the players' ears. I know I know it's uh, early in the week. But anything college pro, uh, you're already looking at. You already have your eye on as far as uh, some action. Well, yeah, I've already placed a bet on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, <laughs> minus six and a half over oh, the Eagles. Yeah. I I just think there's no way that this Eagles offense, whatever it is, can stay with Tom Brady. Tom Brady, you know, is like Benjamin Button. I mean, he's going on 45 years old and he's playing like he's 27. <laughs> it's it's unbelievable. Uh, you know, even without Gronk, I like that offense to put up enough points. The other game I'm kind of looking at here was the Dallas Cowboys at New England. I think that line's a little short. Did that? Did that four four and a half seem a little bit short? Oh for yeah, you guys. Even yeah, though no, it's on I mean, it, I think it opened as low as uh, danger. There might have been some threes, three and a halfs. Even the yeah. uh, the only thing that's scary, I think, I guess, is that the Cowboys are the only team that's undefeated against the spread. You feel like that's eventually gonna <laughs> do to right itself, but yeah. you know, traditionally a non-conference road game for the Cowboys, their their role, and it seems like maybe a a trip up spot for them. But I I just man, my, my, I I think the Patriots are gonna have trouble putting up points against this Cowboys defense, which I I can't I couldn't imagine myself saying that uh, coming into this year. Simple caution, words of caution would be Bill Belichick versus. Mike McCarthy. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You guys brought up McCarthy before and I, I didn't get to address it. I think you're right. That is maybe the only way Dallas gets tripped up. His game management, time management and everything is atrocious. Absolutely oh. atrocious. It is. It is yeah. rough. And if we're I like being, New England this week. I yeah, just, it, you just yeah, talked me talk into it. I'm taking New England. And if we're being <laughs> fair, like again, I was trying to explain this to to my friend here Sean, but the Giants were very much live in that game before that cavalcade of injuries <laughs> happened. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, that kind of highlights the Dallas had, had, had driven a couple times and been held to a field goal. It's that kind of game. We're going to see Dallas put up the yards, but you know, Belichick's going to come with some stuff to confuse them. Yeah. And well, and the thing uh, has Belichick though, I'll say this Belichick against a rookie quarterback. I mean, Davis mills looked pretty good he did. for a, for a large portion of that <laughs> game. So maybe I mean, certainly we we were on the Texans. It, we identified it as a letdown spot a little bit for the Patriots, and that number seemed crazy. Like Mac Jones, nine point road favorite. Uh, yeah. I mean, I get it. Texans are bad, but that seemed like a little wonky there. But I mean, Davis Mills looked kind of defen- decent yeah, against that Patriots did. defense. But that, back that to the bar. He, he had over three hundred yards passing and three touchdowns and no picks. I believe, right? Yeah. I yeah, mean, we, that's why a hell we, of a game. Why do we play him in uh, DFS? This guy's uh, lighting <laughs> people up. That I'm telling you, he had a couple throws of that more kid. That some something's gonna happen there. Uh, Texans are not dead in the water to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Don't yes. look now, Sean. Uh, but back to the Bucks. I, I and your Eagles. I think are we looking at a 2007 situation where, where Tom Brady just needs to start laying double digits every week? It, it, it's wild. And like <laughs> the numbers are there too. It's not like he's just grinding out wins with this good uh, Tampa Bay defense. I mean, he threw for five touchdowns. It's right. It's insane. Like he's, he's in the mix there for uh, you know, NFL MVP. And certainly that narrative uh, will be there and, and kind of coming back to the Eagles game, you know, with no lane Johnson, doesn't look like he's coming back. Uh, for this game, that that you know, Tampa Bay defensive line. I mean, yeah. the real weakness is the secondary, and I don't know. Maybe Quez Watkins get loose for some deep stuff, or if they start, you know, being more aggressive with the ball down the field. I think that's the key to their victory is picking on some of these, you know, defensive backs that the the Bucks have had to rely on. But if they're, you know, they're they're just banking on their pass rush, and uh, again, I, I think it's going to be tough to keep pace offensively. Uh, with the Bucks, but I'm an insane homer, so I'll still probably pick the Eagles <laughs> to win. But uh, if you can get that minus six and a half, which it looked like it was at seven, and yeah, it's all the way down to six and a half now. So good, uh, good look getting on the uh, key number there before it uh, hops above seven. Yeah, I like the six and a half and a college game that sort of stands out to me. Oh, I'm also taking the Cleveland Browns this week too. I think uh, the Cardinals train ends. I think they lose. 
in Cleveland. Cleveland's laying two and a half. I like the Browns to win that game by at least three points. The Nebraska Cornhuskers are favored on the road at Minnesota. Mm. I watched a lot of that Nebraska Michigan game the, uh, the other night. And this is a team that is close. They're getting close. Martinez keeps screwing things up for him, the quarterback, <laughs> but yeah. they are close and they fight. I think they're going to just beat the doors off of the Minnesota Gophers. Uh, they, the, uh, as a road favorite of three and a half. So I took the, uh, the corn Huskers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, Nebraska kind of been all over the place and they've, they've had a couple good games where they've covered and, and not gotten the win, but I, 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 yeah, Nebraska looks solid still. Cla- yeah, they, cla- classic team you take as a dog. You don't, don't take them as a favorite. No, no. I mean, yeah. that, that fumble screwed them the other night. I mean, they had that fumble late and yeah. uh, you know, Michigan took advantage of it. Yeah. I mean, they were, uh, they were in that game the entire time and then uh, things kind of got away from them. Well, Harry, appreciate you calling in, man. Uh, really fun having you on here. Make sure you give him a follow on Twitter at Harry Mays TU, of course, Temple University, <laughs> Temple grad there. And uh, yeah, you they were an admit- embarrassment the other night, oh, yeah. Friday night, <laughs> 52 to three on national TV. They need what to bring joke. Matt Rule back. Get him going. I, I know. <laughs> I'm, you know, there's, there's a part of me, and I love Matt Rule. I covered the oh, team man. when he was there, and I know him a, a little bit. And there's, but there's a part of me that kind of hopes he doesn't make it at Carolina and <laughs> says, you know what? I'm going to come back to Philly. My wife loves Philadelphia, which she does. And I'll have a lifetime job with the temple house. I mean, <laughs> again, if you're, if you're a college coach, you get those lifetime jobs. It's uh, yep. nothing beats it. Yeah. Well, again, appreciate you calling in Harry and uh, make sure you check out all the shows, including the middle show on uh, Jacob media segments for uh, Fox, a gambler. And you have your own uh, golf podcast on there as well, right? Right, swing it and ding it. Swing it and ding it. Well, uh, Harry, appreciate the time and uh, best of luck with the picks. Hey, Sean Kramer, thanks for thanks for having me, man. I enjoyed it. Thanks again to Harry Mays. And uh, before we get into the DFS lineups, want to make sure we shout out Prediction Strike. That's right. You ever thought of taking a uh, sports game and a stock market combining them? Prediction Strike does that. Prediction Strike is the only performance based sports stock market where you can buy and sell shares of professional athletes as if they were stocks. John Gruden stock has got to be super, super low right now. Not a good buy opportunity, but maybe, maybe Russell Wilson, he's a little banged up. Maybe you buy low on Russell Wilson, sell high. Once danger Russ comes back off of the injury report, it's based off of the, uh, the players, different fantasy performances. But again, it's the fun of the, the stock market with sports. You, I, I, come on. If you're listening to the show, you're probably dabbling in the, the stock exchange, the crypto market, get a little NFTs. Why not expand your portfolio with prediction strike use code SGP deposit some uh, funds there. And again, buy, sell and hold shares of athletes sign up with promo code SGP to receive a free athlete share with your first deposit of $20 or more. Ryan, a, a guy hit me up on Twitter saying the free athlete share he got was uh, Mike Williams. So Whoa. I, I don't know how it, how it works up. with the, uh, with the way they r- award these different athletes shares, but um, that's gotta be pretty awesome to get a sweet Mike Williams share. That guy is just dominating right now. It, it's always been an issue with him. The injuries, you know, and, and consistent really quarterback play. Just... Well, Anthony Lynn's play calling overall wasn't horrific, but it, his mm. clock management and just him as a coach, the kicking woes have continued. I, yeah, I really think if you're the Chargers, just go for the, it every time and two point conversions. I, I know we always, Chiefs. I know we always joke about it, but I, I think the chargers would be better without ever kicking. Yeah. This is like the chiefs, man. They, they're they just, they're ready to fly. They really are. And I, and I Bolt was up baby. I was worried he was going to be a little too banged up, but uh looks like he's ready to go. All right, Kramer. Let's talk DFS lineups. Who is your quarterback going into week six? All right. We were talking about Gruden. I figured I'd stay on theme here. Kind of hear me out here. I think this could be a sneaky high scoring game. Denver's Mm. defense has looked like hot garbage lately. I know they're coming home and their offense has shown they can really move the ball. And I think this turns into a little bit of a shootout. Give me Derek Carr. I'm going with the theory that he's an asshole and I don't know if everyone on the team liked him. I don't know if everyone on the team played freely with him because he was such a fucking dickhead when you screwed up. 
And I wonder if you're going to see a team that's playing like they got nothing to lose. Yeah, I mean, this is an interesting handicap as far as how do you handle the Gruden situation? Are they fired up or are they disappointed? I mean, I'm sure like any workplace there's probably some people who like Gruden, but maybe they all hated him and, you know, are going to really like win one to to stick it to him. Who knows? I mean, Derek Carr probably bought himself some time. He certainly was always kind of on Gruden's hot list. I, I never thought he was all in on him. And maybe Carr balls out. The only thing I'm worried about, and this is purely anecdotal, but I feel like division games, and again, just small sample size anecdotally, have been l- lower scoring than we've previously thought. Well, I mean, that's I, the only thing I, that NFC scares me. These games it. have been going over. That's I, true. I think, and I just I, I've been watching like this Denver team. I don't know what's wrong with them, but they they just haven't they they've been beatable. And I think this Raiders team has some legit weapons. So Yeah, I mean, uh, Big Ben looked competent against their defense right now. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, their D-line I, I still think is legit, but um yeah, we'll see. So I I had a uh, 56. It's it is in Denver, which uh, defense does get up a little bit for that, but I I don't think anyone's going to have that. Kind of an interesting slate in general cuz there's the London game, uh, then you have all the primetime games, and teams are on by. So, uh, kind of limited slate. I did have a uh, Tim Patrick uh, in in a different lineup that I did. He's only fifty one hundred. Seems to be Teddy's Teddy's kind of go to guy. Nine target game against the Steelers. So oh, mi- Sutton had eleven. Just oh, we did. Yeah, they're they're both getting, okay. They're both uh, well. And that's kind of why I like it for this game. Like that offense is kind of slinging it around. Yeah, you're right. Sutton had 11, 11 targets, seven for one twenty. But All right. but to the point, it's pretty narrow target distribution. The receivers are getting it, and uh, again, I, I think the game profiles like it could be a little bit. There could be some scoring. Great. Now maybe I'm crazy, but fifty eight hundred dollars at home. Yeah, against the worst defense. Give me Taylor Heineke. So I, I originally. I'm definitely going to have this lineup, but I also had a moment where I was like, is this going to be a very popular play? I don't know. Cause uh, a, everyone's going to f- slot in Ricky seals, Jones and Terry McLaurin. It's an easy, yep. it's a, it's an easy thought. Like you don't have to think much to where the stack is. You're saving money. You're correlating the tight end. You're doing all the things you're supposed to do. I, I still you bring th- it back with a potentially a Tyree kill, or even like you can get funny uh, maybe with a Hardman or something like that. But uh, I I I had a moment where I was like, is this going to be a popular way to play it, or is it really going to be a nice contrarian angle? Because I I know Mahomes, the Mahomes stacks are going to be coming yeah, out. Yeah, I, I think the Mahomes stack will be up there. I think Lamar uh, might be up there just because people saw him do it in prime time. I think even uh, Herbert too. I even think. Dak uh, against uh, New England because everyone's well, all high on Dak. I mean, the Kirk Cousins, uh, you know, I, I know they he didn't really quite get there. Uh, last week against Detroit, but uh, at Carolina, their defense doesn't look amazing. And 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 don't look now, but Sean, I really thought there was a chance you were going to bring us Mac Jones as the quarterback. Uh, going against that Dallas team, I assume they're going to have to throw the ball a little bit. That'd be a fun contrarian play. All right, what do you got for your running running back, back one? Uh, I'm I'm kind of fading this the angle that Heineke will be a little chalkier, and I'm going Antonio Gibson. Because the way that they have to play this game, I think, and the way that they're getting Gibson involved, uh, seems like the shin's not a big deal for now. Uh, he was pretty involved in the last game. He's only sixty five hundred, and you nailed the angle. The Chiefs' defense has just been they've been they've been horrible. You can run on them, you can pass on them. Uh, you, it is going to be a track meet, but I think Gibson uh, this this could be maybe that big Gibson game that all the uh, fantasy best ball nerds are waiting for. Yeah, don't mind it. I mean, coming off a twenty carry game again, how can you not load up against this uh, KC uh, defense? I, I went to Austin Eckler again. I know he's coming off a big game, kind of got that weird touchdown at the end, almost a garbage touchdown essentially, but he's involved in the passing game. Seventeen carries, getting his. And Baltimore's defense, they looked really bad uh, against the run. I mean, Jonathan Taylor, right? We lost our uh, ETH League game by 0.18 fantasy Fucking points ass. because Jonathan Taylor had like 35. And Jonathan Taylor, there's a lot of, you know, the, the, I, well, he had that, uh, 
receiving touchdown. He he was all over the place. So I think Eckler could have a similar game. Baltimore off a short week and and the Chargers just really flying right now. So yeah, give me Austin Eckler seventy nine hundred. Yeah, you can do a Herbert Eckler and pick one of the receivers. It's pretty fun stack. I I do wonder if Eckler is going to be very popular this week. His price is pretty cheap, uh, seventy nine hundred, and he's got that green twenty eight next to him. All right, so for my running back, Sean, I stack game stacked. Mm. Went Daryl Williams, probably going to be the starter now with uh, Edwards Elair out with the MCL. Uh, Forty nine hundred. Assume this will be a popular play again. I think, I think people will be rushing to get the receivers in the lineup. So, so to to kind of go against that, uh, I running back stacked the Kansas City Washington game. Hmm. Yeah, I I. Uh... I, I like the angle there. My second running back, fifty four hundred dollars. Give me Devonte Booker. I mean, he's filling in for Saquon. They're at home. Glennon. I mean, all four receivers are injured to some degree. How does how does he not get like seven targets at least? I mean, I considered Evan Ingram. Yeah, that's that's fun. Uh, John Ross, another fun name. Probably going to get a lot of targets. Glennon uh, seemed to go his direction a couple of times, but yeah, Book Booker is. I, I would have met. He's got to be chalky, right? For that price, I yeah. guess. I guess the risk is they just can't do anything against the Rams' defensive line. I don't know. What do you got for your receivers, Ryan? First one, I I uh, I didn't go Patrick. I went Sutton as my bring back player. The the targets have just been there with Teddy, and I think in this game that if it is a little higher scoring, he's going to see a lot of the work. Starting to look like that guy, that stud that we saw. Before the ACL uh, tear, sixty two hundred only, and for a guy getting double digit tar- double digit targets on the regular, that feels like a, a a nice discounted price. So brought it back with Sutton. Yeah, no, I mean I, I like that angle a lot there. I'm going Tyree Kill for my bring back in the Casey Washington. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be chalky, but I mean. That's okay. They were getting carved up by Jameis Winston. Like, yeah. come on, you got to get. So I mean, and this Washington defense probably one of the biggest disappointments in the NFL as far as the hype they were receiving coming into the yeah. season, and and what they put out there. He Tyree kills eighty five hundred. He's dealing with the slight knee thing that they say isn't anything. So something to monitor as we go on in the week. But eighty five hundred could be Tyree kill on the bring back. I what mean, about you, Kramer? Deontay Harris is at like an actual homeless man's Tyree kill. So it, <laughs> and he went to town last week. So. Yeah, so I stacked uh, Derek Carr with rugs. I mean, if you're gonna stack with anyone on that team, this Edwards guy doesn't seem like he has hands. Like he he might look like a Greek god with his shirt off, but he can't seem to fucking catch the ball. Uh, well, and and you, rugs keeps co- like he has a couple big plays a game, at least one, and he's just he. You feel like he's close to a massive game. Well, well clearly this Denver team guesses or cheats or does something because. Or they just play too aggressive because Big Ben was able to beat them kind of deep in the same way, where it was kind of like j- just busted eyes were in the wrong place. So you know if it may, if you're gonna stack with anyone, I mean Rugs big play potential. Maybe he pops for uh, like five catches, 180 yards, and two touchdowns, a couple big ones. Yeah, no, I I, I like 5200. I like Henry Rugs, Ryan. Like Henry Ruggs almost as much as I like keeping my hair. That's oh, right. Nice work. Prevention is key, and that's why you got to go to keeps.com slash SGP. Keeps.com slash SGP to get your first month free of treatment. Keeps. Simple, stress free way to keep your hair. You get that convenient virtual doctor consultation. And again, low cost. Treatment start at just $10 per month, and you get the first month of treatment free. Doesn't get any better than that. Don't fumble away your follicles. Make sure you go to keeps.com slash SGP. Keeps.com slash SGP. Also want to shout out Odds Crowd. Oddscrowd.com. They're getting geared up for the NBA season. That's right. They're giving away three thousand dollars in their season long contest, free to enter, and two hundred dollar weekly contest as well. It's very easy to use. Just go to oddscrowd.com. They also have a uh, sweet app. Uh, just look it up in the uh, App Store, Google Play Store. Free to download. You can track your bets, chat with uh, other other users, and uh, this is really cool. Set up your own private fantasy betting contest. So uh, you and your buddies want to get a little pool going together. Oddscrowd.com is the place you want to head. 
My second receiver, as you imagine, Terry McLaurin, scary Terry. It's spooky season, Ryan. Coming off a 11 target, only four catch game, very inefficient. He looks to get right against the Chiefs at home. I, I mean, again, some of these are chalky, but I, I hopefully I throw enough people off with the hiding key, and my flex play I think will be pretty uh, low owned as well. All right, uh, this may be the last time I go to the well. I haven't done it recently, but I'm gonna play Robbie Anderson. He had seven targets last week, <laughs> only two catches. He was mad too. He was mad. And Matt Rule addressed it. He was mad they weren't doing double moves on the Eagles' corners because they were sitting on it. Maybe the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And this Minnesota secondary has been beaten. Uh, I think this game. You know, you mentioned Cousins. This this is a game you could find yourself stacking. I think this is another game that maybe we could see a higher score than you might uh, originally think. I'm going to go Robbie Anderson. He's only 4,800. Mm. And again, he's seeing the targets. Like you mentioned, he's pointing things out. He's not just being a whiny diva like, like Beckham or someone like that. He's pointing <laughs> out a logical, reasonable points. I, maybe they feed him a little bit here. And, and like you said, I think maybe they will chase in the Vikings and, and Kirk cousins. So 4,800 Robbie Anderson. All right. Oh man. Hmm. I, I like your Cortland Sutton considered putting them in there, but I, I'm going to stick with this guy and uh, have a little mini game stack to pair with my uh, Devonte Booker. I'm going to go Robert Woods, $6,100, massive opportunity against the Giants. I mean, they're what ten and a half point favorites. He's coming off a massive game, so uh, maybe you're in trouble there. But no touchdowns. He he did have 14 targets, 12 catches, and he was the squeaky wheel that got the grease. And I can't imagine they're going to get away from him that much. And he's still sixty one hundred dollars against his defense. Yeah. Again, maybe high ownership, but uh, I love me some Robert Woods this week. All right, tight end. Tight Dub- end. What do you got? Well, you got You got to do it right. You got to double stack, and you got to correlate that tight end in there with your quarterback. So give me Waller. Yeah, sixty six hundred. His price is pretty low. Is this the lowest he's been all year? Waller. He started out on fire. He's mm-hmm. cooled off as of late. You feel, I mean, if you're the special teams guy drawing up a game plan, isn't it just throw to Waller? (laughs) Like, don't you just write that on the chalkboard? I mean, I think there's a reasonable chance that they called Carr into the meeting room and said, "Let's come up with the game plan." Like, yeah, you're the the quarterback. What do you? What do we normally run? What do you like to run? And I think a lot of that's going to be Waller. I think it's going to be shots the rugs, and it's going to be a lot of Waller. Uh, They're going to sprinkle in the run, but 6,600 is is too cheap. Mm. If I cash a lot of money with this lineup, I might have to might have to get like a Raiders T-shirt, add it to my bolt up collection. <laughs> Good time. Maybe you can get one of those like uh, John Gruden Chucky dolls. Those things have to be selling. How many cheap people right are playing the Derek Carr double stack in the uh, Millie Maker? There's, is I, it I less know, than five percent? I, I can't. This this. Two percent. I'm not great at guessing. Uh, Ownership percentage. I mean, make sure you check out Establish the Run. They're good at uh, predicting that. But I could not guess at all because there's not like, and maybe Heineke is the obvious play, but I feel like he's such a cheap quarterback that he's not going to be a, a high ownership guy. We'll see. But uh, interesting. And and I did go Ricky Seals Jones, $3,000. It's just such a smash spot. And he's kind of been emerging, you know, coming off an eight target performance. We've seen the tight ends do great against Kansas City. I mean, Dawson Knox looks really good. And yeah. Dawson Knox, um, I actually made him the number one tight end in my fantasy football rankings. He's going up against the Titans, and that offense is on fire. Maybe I'm crazy, but uh feels like an awesome spot for Dawson Knox and Ricky Seals Jones. He's only three thousand. I mean, we can get cute here, but I, I think at some point you just and I think you're going to see. I mean, he's certainly going to be chalk because he will be in there with the Mahomes, uh, Hill, and you know, pick another wide receiver double stacks. If you're smart, you bring it back with the tight end that way. So I, I think, you know, he's he's an easy guy to play too at that price. Oh yeah. And you saw all the targets he's going to get. I mean, Heineke at the end of the day, he's still he's still like a FCS guy. No offense. All right. Wow, Rex. Rex. XFL, come on. Uh I'm I'm chasing points here a little bit. Uh give me John Jonathan Taylor. They're playing the Texans. Uh Mills had a game. I don't think they're gonna have a game. I kinda you know, the Colts showed me something on Monday Night Football, Sean. And I think this defense is gonna do something. And I think Taylor, 
what did we see Taylor do once they kind of sorted things out last year? He went bonkers. Yeah. It's like 30 points after 30 points. So only 6,600 clear bell cow. I think this is the kind of game script where he could get to 25 carries. Well, and, no problem. And, and if I'm Frank Reich, I'm thinking, don't let Carson Wentz throw this game away. Let's, I mean, just hand it off to Jonathan yeah. Taylor. We got to get don't a win. We're a it. desperate team. I mean, and you're at home against the Texans. You can't lose this game. And again, f- for that, I think both him and Gibson in the games that they're walking into with the workload that they're going to have, maybe that's the chalk part of my, I, I'm still leaning into Gibson, not being popular, but Taylor probably going to be pretty popular, but that's fine. He's, he's the chalk in my lineup. Yeah. All right. Here's my take, Ryan. If I was to tell you one receiver that is, that has haunted the giants in recent memory, who would that receiver be? Uh, Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson. That's right. This is an emotional play. This is a gut play. He's he hasn't done much except he had that you know one game uh, where he kind of went off. Again, this is this is Deshaun Jackson's profile right now, right? Like, and clearly he has a thing against the Giants. It's Miracle in the Meadowlands 2.0. I mean, his his you know his game log for the Rams is pretty funny. It's like two for twenty one. Uh, didn't play three for one twenty and a touchdown. One for six. One for sixty eight. So he's still got that speed. They're still taking deep shots, and you know Deshaun likes to do it in the Meadowlands. Uh, I, I think. I mean, I'm gonna look up his uh, career splits because he's. It's got to be up there as far as teams he's had the most success against. Thirty percent of the snap count last week. Um, he's only thirty seven hundred dollars and. Again, I'm just looking for that deep play touchdown that'll help carry you for 3700. Well, the key is that uh Tutu Atwell is still not getting out there, so. Yeah, no, if if Tutu was uh, was really picking it up, then maybe I wouldn't play him, but the fact that he's still kind of clearly the guy um yeah, I I I think that's uh it's uh, it's right up there. He so the Redskins, he has the most touchdowns against with seven. Giants are second with six touchdowns. And uh six. What? I know, it seems like more. Is that just receiving? Yeah. Oh, he's got the return touchdown. Yes. Mm. So he's got uh <laughs> seventy two catches for eleven hundred and forty three yards. R- so real that's piece a pretty of good shit, this guy. <laughs> real piece of shit. Yeah, he has two return touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. So nine total touchdowns against the New York Giants. He owns them. Thirty seven hundred dollars. Like the spot here. Unlike you to align yourself with a filthy hippie from Cal. Oh, I, I Deshaun Jackson does not strike me. <laughs> Imagine as Imagine him hanging out with the uh, the locals up there in Berkeley. All right, defense. I stacked with the running back. Give me the Colts against the Texans. Uh, I'm definitely fading Davis. All the rookies. If a rookie has a good game, the next game we're fading them. So let's let's fade Davis Mills. Give me the Colts defense. Thirty five up, thirty five hundred spent up a little Ooh, bit. Okay, saved a hundred. Uh, like I said, I think I think this Colts defense is slowly rounding into shape. And what better than to play the Texans to have one of those games, or maybe maybe you put one in the end zone. Ryan, if you're hanging out in the Slack channel, uh, we we're talking about that uh, Baltimore game. I got in on it live at plus one and a half. You dog. What a sweat. What a wild ride. But uh, I mean, what really killed it was that fumble that almost was a touchdown return the other way. He almost fumbled again. Lamar, Lamar, this season been pretty careless with the ball. Now you have this Chargers defense, very good at turning teams over, and you have Baltimore on a short week. Hmm. I like the I like the Chargers sack and turnover potential, and they haven't had a breakout game. I mean, they're coming off a game where their defense was negative three in fantasy. They really let Baker carve them up. I don't think anyone's going to play Chargers defense. Twenty five hundred dollars against Lamar on a short week. There's a and and Lamar career game. I mean, again, we kind of talked about it on the show, but his passing has gotten Fuck, way we better. Nailed that point, and I so badly looked at the Lamar like to throw for. Th- Normally, a quarterback is throw for th- four hundred, but Lamar was only three fifty. Really? And there and was what was that the three fifty and four was like twenty five to one or something. Oh like that. man. 
And it, but it was just like that's stupid. He's not like that's not going to happen. <laughs> I mean, remember the passing touchdowns prop was one and a half. Just smashed it. I think we both went two and one on the props. It was a good yep two and one in the props. Uh, Latavius Murray never really had a shot on those. Uh, yeah, Carson Wentz that pussy. He didn't get over eight and a half. <laughs> he really, he really is. Uh, oh man, so soft. You just knew. And uh, my wife was asking me, like, uh, did the Colts win? I'm like, no, it was great. I Carson love how Wentz, she checks in on Carson. That. Carson Wentz <laughs> lost, but he played good enough to like not even question his starting job. Dream scenario. They're now one and four. Uh, he's playing all the snaps. And again, that game really wasn't Wentz's fault. No, but he just has this loser energy that follows him around. I mean, really, it was <laughs> that you know. Well, what you gotta love, Sean, is the the analytics community that keep throwing out like, look, Carson Wentz has one of the best this, and yeah. the, Carson Wentz is throwing the ball down the field, and Carson Wentz has the most catchable balls. It's like I mean, really, the game probably was just that kid Squints or whatever his name is with the uh, glasses uh, that looks like the kid from the Sandlot, all grown up and and kicking. He, it really was his fault. I mean, the block kicks, the missed extra points. Tough week for kickers. As yeah, I brutal, tweeted out, they brutal. made it all about them that this week. <laughs> made it all about themselves. Brutal, brutal week for kickers. All right, that'll do it for the podcast. We're gonna do some Thursday night props uh, tomorrow night on the NFL picks episode. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you drop us a nice uh, rating and review on the old Apple Podcast for your chance to win free gear every Monday. Give us a follow on Twitter at Gambling Podcast. So you can call in on uh, Sundays, pregame and postgame show live on Twitter Spaces to get your calls on the air. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast and for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. As Sean pointed out, I will have a stone cold winner first touchdown prop for Thursday Night Football on the Pick Show. Crim, let it ride.